Unsupervised learning is a very crucial point to achieve higher per level of performance of model. We already achieve a lot of uh, un awesome unsupervised learning methods in text, in images. But for the video and the text, understanding there's still very limited uh, progress being made. And this paper, video clip, it's very, very groundbreaking paper that demonstrated how this video and the transcripts on supervised learning can really boost the state of the art results. So how does this work? It's very conceptual, conceptually simple. It's basically we have video and we have transcript and we try to use leverage the video and transcript to do some uh, contrastive learning which means the objective is to learn to align the, the similar the text, the corresponding text to the corresponding video clips and uh, distinguish the, those uh, clips and the text that are irrelevant. So we need to, in order to do that, we need to construct the positive examples and the negative examples. The tricky part is how do you construct the negative examples? So this is what we will learn from this paper. And why is this paper important? Uh, first of all, a video to text, uh, video text or text to video is the last piece, last puzzle, because we already do a lot of uh, images, text, text to image, images to text, but the video and the text is really, really a different area. It's much difficult, much more difficult because there, uh, uh, in terms of video, the data, the data volume is tremendous. And also, uh, why this method is so good is because we all, almost have unlimited data, uh, which means the video with transcripts. Imagine if you can have YouTube for as your data data set. YouTube has so many different videos with transcripts. So if you can leverage that, you can definitely build a very powerful model. And these proposed methods outperform the all existing zero shot learning methods and even outperform the supervised learning model. So this is very, very crazy. In my opinion, it's a very underrated uh, paper and uh, it's a burr moment for video tech, text understanding. Uh, by the way, if you would like to receive more deep learning content, uh, don't forget to subscribe. I make deep learning videos every week. And your subscription is definitely uh, the greatest encouragement for me to make more videos like this. So this paper was published by uh, Hu Xu and uh, other authors from the Facebook, AI, and the uh, CMU. Uh, before we dive in, we need to refresh a little bit like what's a retrieval augmented training. It's kind of a new trend. Um, basically, it's a very combined, very popular constructive, contrastive learning and the retrieval augmented. Uh, because contrastive learning need to have the um, positive and the negative examples. And how do you construct the negative examples? You need uh, is where the retrieval augmented uh, comes in. So for the constructive learning, you want to make you want to minimize the loss function when the when the when when the example is positive. When the example is negative, means they are not similar. So you want to increase the loss fun. You want to maximize the loss function. So that's the basic cons concept of uh, constructive learning. Basically, uh, the key is how to construct the negative examples. Okay, so video clip pre-training. The key challenge of these things is how do you how do you connect how did you learn the association and the fine grain is fine grain association be, between video and the text uh, for example if i uh, show you a video of uh, how to make a cake and i will definitely say a lot of things about cake and i will also make a lot of things uh, make cakes how do you associate the the the, the, the transcripts they contain cakes and the, the the image, the the videos, the frames they are really making cakes. It's very difficult because uh, when I say I am going to show you how how do I make cake, uh, not necessarily I will be 
actually making cake at that moment, right? So this is the difficult part of this uh, objective. So video and the text encoding, which is means how do we, uh, we, we now we know how difficult it is. Uh, we need to uh, do one thing first. We need to encode video and the text because video and text is basically non-machine readable. So how do you uh, encode that? For the text, it's easy. You just uh, convert that to a one high encoder and uh, fit into a bird. Uh, if you are familiar with NLP, it's definitely easy. But for for video, it's also not that hard. It's basically you have a video clips. Uh, the clips consists of uh, a sequence of frame, right? A, sequ a sequence of frames. So you need to convert the sequence of frames uh, to a vectors. But first of all, you need to convert. You need to convert the frame, one frame to a vector. So you use CNN, which is a fixed CNN. Uh, you already pre-trained on other things, and you or you f you frozen it, and then you frozen the weights. Then you fit your two D frames, which is an image. Every frame is an image to a CNN, and you will generate vector representations for you, and uh, put into another uh, multi-layer perceptron. And the stop gradient means you f you freeze this CNN. And then you have uh, a representation for each frame, which is a, you can imagine it's a vector for each frame. And for the text, it's a, you have a list of tokens. Uh, for example, I have a pen, a list of tokens, right? Then you feed this to your bird encoder, then you have a representation for each token. So if the, I have a pen, I have a pen, four tokens, then you have four vectors. For image, for video, if you have four frames, you also have four four vectors. But the crucial part is how do you select the representation uh, for one video? Because one video can contain multiple frames, but that means you have multiple vectors. How do you select a representative vector for this video? It's tricky. Some people use a classification token, but in this paper, they don't use that. The, what they what they use they use average pooling. Basically, you can imagine just the average the every dimension of the vectors, uh, every different vectors uh, they belong to different frames, and then you have the representation for this video for the text. Same thing, you do a, a max pooling uh, across different uh, tokens, and then you have every dimension. You basically average the every value in different vectors means different tokens, then you got a represent representation of the given text, a list of uh, tokens. That's how you do it. And uh, uh, one thing you need to know is uh, they have the two separate separate trainable transformers. One is for uh, image, uh, sorry, one is for videos, and one is for text. This is the, the, the transformer that you encode, the encode, how you encode the information. And this CNN is just uh, to get the feature, and then after that you fit into uh, your transformer. And for the text, same thing. Uh, so for this loss function, this loss function, right? You want to minimize the loss function means you want to maximize this term NCE. So what does NCE mean? Is actually uh, you can be decomposed like this. So uh, you want to maximize this term. So you want to first uh, maximize the numerator, numerator, this one. So the, when the Z plus means it's a text, uh, it's corresponding to the video clip, which means it's positive example. You want this as big as possible. It means their inner product should be as big as possible. So if they are similar, they inner product should be should be big. This is one of your adjective. This one. So when they when they are negative example means that the text is not corresponding to when the text is not corresponding to the video you want this as small as possible which is if it's a negative example the inner product should be small then by doing this you are you you are actually maximizing your nc turn when you maximizing your nc turn you are minimizing your loss so this is how this work I know I skip uh, maybe one two steps, but if you don't understand, just uh, stare this formula for 
a few more minutes, then you will get it. Some other tips is how how they do construct the negative example. So it's a very interesting. The first sample a text clip means uh, one one section of the text, and they say if you sample a video first, then you may find out a lot of a video they has they 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 has no corresponding text because a lot of video they they don't have any transcript right. Maybe people are driving, people are uh, moving, people are running, right? But if you always sample a text, you definitely will always have a video clip that corresponding to the text. And then you select a time step that within a boundary in this as a center means uh, you select maybe from zero uh, seconds to 10 seconds as your text clip, then you randomly select a time step maybe seven as a boundary with because seven is within the boundary as a center, then you Grow, you grow your video clip with a random duration. Maybe uh, it's your duration is five, duration is six. So you will have uh, a time step from uh, four to ten. Then this is your video clip and uh, your corresponding time step transcripts. So this is some some detail of how they overlap the video text. But in general, you you don't need to understand so so detail unless you are going to implement this. What you need to know is they this is how they align the video and the text clips, and the more tricky part is how they retrieve the negative examples. Basically, they do some class clustering and uh, find out some irrelevant videos, then assign the the text and the video together, which means a negative example when the text is not re relevant to to the video. Is how they construct the negative example, but it's very, it's quite detailed, it's quite complex. I would say, if you are really interested in this, or if you're really working on this domain, look into this uh, algorithm, you will find out. And uh, after we know how they train, how they pre-train, how they do the uh, con constructive learning, and uh, we may look into how they do the. Uh, what's what are their end end tasks they use to evaluate the model? Because uh, when you do the self supervised learning, contrast contrastive learning, you always need an end task to evaluate your 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 self supervised learning method. So one of the uh, model, the, one of the tasks they use is the text video retrieval, which means give you a text and you retrieve a relevant video, and this is can test your this third, uh, basically this, this third. When they are similar, uh, you should have a very big in the product. You just use that as a, uh, your search matrix. Uh, naive way is I give you text, you and you you do in the product with all the video clips, and you find which one has a bigger in the product. But definitely, uh, it's not like that. You you definitely need to do some indexing, some 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 optimization methods. And uh, also multiple choice uh, video QA, which means uh, uh, the model will receive a video and uh, 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 several uh, text clips, and model need to know need need to tell you which text clip is corresponding to this video. So it's kind of select the select one correct out of uh, multiple candidates, and the action segmentation is very interesting. It's if you are an NLP person, you 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 can think this is a kind of NER in, in the video. Basically, you predefine uh, certain labels. For example, this per you predefine a person is cooking, predefine a person is running. Then your model receives a video, which is a list of uh, frames, right? The model will classify each frame to the predefined predefined label, which means it's nothing or person running, person cooking, person writing, person typing, so they kind of things. So if you're running from frame 1 to frame 10, then these 10 frames will be classified as running. And the rest of them, maybe you're doing nothing, they'll classify, classify as nothing. So these are three different tasks to evaluate uh, the, the pre-training methods. And uh, for the first one, Text to video, uh, text video retrieval, and the D D demo data sets. If you're interested, Google it. You will understand these data sets. And what I 
want to tell you is uh, this zero shot learning methods it's crazy it's uh, it re retrieve the 16 re recall uh, top one recall and the top five recall top uh, top one top five recall means like a, uh, if your top one results contain the correct one if your top five result contain the correct one okay so you can see they are comparing this one with a supervised fully supervised uh, model this model is not just fully supervised you use unsupervised learning methods then find you on the label data so it's very powerful state-of-the-art model and compared to that he only uh, he only lost to clippers and the rest of models supervised models actually cannot compare with this unsupervised zero shot transfer learning model so that's why i say this is really the bird moment and also another data set video qa and definitely is this task seems more complex so the uh, zero shot learning model cannot compare to the cannot cannot really defeat the state of the art model previous state of the art model but if you fine tune it if you find it on label data it's 92 accuracy it's amazing it's amazing it's state of the art and uh, even the zero shot learning model is out of it outperforms so many dif different models but definitely those models are a little bit old like three four years old but if you fine tune this model it will increase 20 percent accuracy it's insane and the action segmentation okay this is more interesting so if you look at the actions of segmentation it outperforms so many different models even outperform the 2020 models and if, if you fine tune it it's a state of the art it's crazy it's crazy increase the 10 percent accuracy so why i am saying this is so powerful because you have unlimited amount of data you they only do this uh, contrastive learning on the one public data set imagine if you do the same thing on youtube whole youtube videos with transcripts which google will definitely do or google is already doing and i think google will pop maybe they'll publish their results uh, maybe in the, in the in the next six months or 12 months i believe so and also not only google can do because a lot of companies maybe facebook itself this paper is pub published by, by facebook they also have so many videos i think they can do it as well okay so it's amazing it's uh, just uh, on very small scale of data sets if you scale it up maybe by 10,000 100,000 times then you will have crazy crazy models they can understand video and the text at the same time okay so what did we learn uh, we learned how to leverage on limited video text data is a treasure and uh, how to do the contrastive learning and the retrieval augmented we didn't really focus on the retrieval augmented how to construct the negative examples but we uh, focus we, we learn a lot of things about contrastive learning on the video text and uh, we we know this model outperforms uh, OE16 zero shot learning methods even outperform a lot of uh, su supervised uh, supervised models and more importantly more importantly e as it provides a very promising directions for video text understanding and you can apply the same method very similar method to uh, audio text okay so this is really a burn moment this is the end of the video if you would like to receive more deep learning content like this don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like and share the video with your friends that are interested you like the video it's really it really helped the youtube algorithms all right that's all for today and uh, stay tuned stay safe stay happy and i will see you next time